so let's have a quick uh, recap what we did yesterday so that uh, uh, those of you if, if you're you, if you're new to this uh, uh, meeting if, if you're not yesterday and you can this will be beneficial to you so i was actually uh, talking about uh, william carey who said if you can hold the rope then i can go and uh, you know go to india basically he said like i will go down if you will hold the rope and on this uh, very important many of his sermons are very important but on this particular occasion on may 30th 1792 he preached as a chapter four verses two and three and then he based his entire sermon on these two arguments which became a missionary motto and which is even now a great missionary motto because uh, william carey is considered to be the father of modern missions and these are the two sentences that he uh, brought out of the, his own understanding of the word of god expect great things from god attempt to great things for god so the mission work the the work of god mission when you say it might have several meanings but when we mean when we talk about the mission it is the great commission of jesus christ which he gave to his disciples just before his ascension that you find it in matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 and this is what jesus said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to observe all that i have commanded you and behold i am with you always to the end of the age and one more important thing that jesus told his disciples that is recorded in acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem in in all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth so that is the great commission the very uh, the first scripture means matthew uh, chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 is called as the great commission so we are supposed to uh, follow obey the commandment this commission of our lord jesus christ and he has not left us alone so he has empowered us he has empowered his disciples he has empowered the church because we are part of the church and all of us who know christ as our personal savior can receive this wonderful blessing uh, of his spirit's empowerment so that we can be a witness to wherever he sends and then uh, we 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 spoke about understanding our call in understanding our call i told there are two symbols that jesus christ uses one is the cross another one is the yoke but the yoke is a very important one because yoke is something that disciplines us to become a true follower of jesus christ there are three things involved in it first is decision second is discipleship and third one is deliverance so we are called to decision the first step to commitment is to recognize jesus christ as the son of god and begin following him it is in it is only in him and through him that we can find god the second one is um, when we are deciding it we have to remember one thing the essence of christianity is that jesus christ is god he is not just a part of god he is not just sent from god he is not just related to god he is he was and he is god so that's the essence of christianity the second thing is we are called to discipleship we are not simply following christ for our own uh, selfish reasons we are uh, following christ so that we can learn from him that's a very important thing that we we should understand because the very greek word the in the in the original tongue the word disciple basically means a learner a student and the third one we were talking about was called to deliverance all who follow have this great promise of jesus that he will deliver us he will deliver us from our weariness and frustration of our empty lives okay why the yoke because real peace and true rest are by products of commitment this we need to keep in mind and uh we were talking about what is christ's offer to each one of us to each of his disciple come take and learn that's what we saw in our call okay so the first thing is we have to be a disciple we are called to be disciples so we have to be a disciple we have to take up the yoke and learn from him this learning is a continuous process secondly we thought we we, we spoke about i spoke about understanding our times in understanding our times there are two major truths realities that we need to keep in our mind the first thing is the postmodern mocks at the at the truth the postmodern world does not believe in any absolute things it believes in uh, relative truths uh, so it mocks at the truth 
So that's a thing that we need to really engage and prepare ourselves to answer to it properly. And number two is the social media rules the world. We know it like social. What what's the power of social media and the mainstream media also? So uh, the world is being controlled by media. So that's a reality that we need to keep in mind. There are other things that we need to also understand that what's happening around us. One is world religions versus pluralism, increased materialism and increased poverty, disease and disasters, urbanization and youth, persecution and nominalism, and finally the new faces of mission. So these are the things that yesterday I spoke to you, uh, you about. And now we are going to uh, you know start from where we left it. So this this was the last thing that I spoke with you. Given these realities, how do we respond? If we are true disciples of Jesus Christ, and if, if Jesus is expecting us to fulfill his great commission, what is that great commission? Go and make disciples of all nations. Nobody is an exception. You have to go everywhere, wherever he sends you, and make disciples. So if you have to do that, we have to understand certain things. How can we do this work? How do we respond to this? So I'll I'll take uh, you into this journey where you can understand like what are these uh, ways where we can respond to this great need and this great call of our Lord. Let us understand that there is an open door of opportunity. It is not a simple problem. Whenever we look around us, we always we we tend to see things negatively. That's a kind of a fallenness that we find in us. We always find to you know find the negative things of life. Oh, this can't be done. This is very difficult. This is a very hard area. You know, people are fundamentals. All kinds of excuses. When I was you know planning to come to Maharashtra, that's what a lot of people were telling me. You know, you should go to some tribal area or somewhere where there is more uh, you know reception where people will receive. You are going to a place where it is the heartland of the fundamentalists. So why do you want to go there? Uh, see, there is always a door of opportunity. Wherever there's persecution, wherever there was op op oppression, ob ob objections, oppositions, you can, you can all, the other side of the coin is it's opportunity. So we have to simply seek the face of God to find out which would be the right way, right method to approach these people with the wonderful message of love, the message of Christ. Okay, there are a few scriptures that I would, I would like to read for you. Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know your works. This is Christ telling to the church. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and, and have not denied my name. Uh, my beloved, we need to understand that this mission is not our mission. It's not anybody else's mission. It is not a church's mission, nor any para, para church's mission. It is the mission of Jesus Christ. So it is he who decides. He is a mission director. He has sent his spirit. He has empowered his church. He is providing all the resources that we need. Actually, we think like we need a lot of money and things like that, but it is absolutely not necessary. If you if you disagree with me, I would encourage you to read the book of Acts. It's it's a great inspirational book for me, and I keep reading every month. I keep reading the book of Acts every month, and every time God gives me new insights in that. I learn a lot, and you know I would encourage you to do that if you are contemplating about committing yourself to the work of God to this in fulfilling this great commission. You want to be a part of mission somewhere in some place. So I would encourage you to read and meditate on the book of Acts. See, it is the mission of Christ. So he says that I am uh, going to set before you an open door. So we have to, first of all, identify those open doors. Where are those open doors? Uh, not in our understanding but in his understanding wherever he has opened his doors we need to identify those open doors okay another thing is first corinthian chapter 16 verse 9 he was actually this is paul writing to the uh, corinthian church he he is um, he is claiming something which is very beautiful for an wide door for effective effective work has opened to me and there are many adversaries see there is there is there are adversaries, there are troubles, there is problem everywhere, but that's one side. But the other side is, there is a wide door open for me to do God's work effectively. So we we have to develop that kind of you know vision or eyesight where we would be able to understand or identify the open doors. 
so that's uh, the thing that the church is uh, maybe not seeing it it has its own agenda so that's why we always keep telling people that the church is in is being persecuted 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 you know the, these 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 things keeps you keep hearing it okay whatever reason it is for uh, but i think like uh, in my own experience and from many hundreds of people who serve uh, the lord all around the world we always see these open doors because uh, god is the director of this mission this is his world the whole world belongs to him so we are simply co-workers i i'll be coming to that point little later okay who can walk through this door well i told you there is an open door god has kept open doors everywhere all around the world even you know there are places where we can't even imagine i'm i'll be sharing a few things from my from my own experience also you know but a little later who can go through this door who are the people who are qualified to go through this door let me just uh, list it out uh, really quickly number one people of integrity can walk through this door if you're truthful before god truthful in your calling truthful in whatever you do integrity is something that is really lacking in christian missions and even in christian leadership not only in missions in even our local churches we find there is always a question of integrity my dear friends i would like to encourage you that this is the first step where we need to look into our lives and identify whether i am walking faithfully truthfully before the lord so to walk a life of faithfulness truthfulness life of integrity we need to understand what god wants from us so that's another different topic or an understanding that we need to get from the word of god god's word gives us the perfect way to walk in integrity so that you you try to do that you know every sing every person every child of god has this responsibility to understand what god wants from me it is not telling god lord this i want you know i want this i want that these are my desires these are my needs god knows all our needs we uh, many times we don't even need to uh, tell him that we need this he already knows it and he would provide definitely he'll provide in his own sweet time but the more the more uh, the, the most important thing that god really wants from us is that we would live a life that would uh, be so pleasing to him a life which is a sweet smelling aroma to him uh, like a sacrifice a pleasing sacrifice that's what paul was telling to the roman church you you can find that in roman chapter 12 okay people of integrity can walk through informed people can walk through when i was a little kid you know in i was living in chennai so that's uh, some of the privileges that you get when you live in metro cities you know so this uh, huge om ships used to come operation mobilization ships logos and dulos they came to madras and uh, you know my parents took me to that uh, ship it was a uh, you know floating library and it's a big bookstore and the hundreds and thousands of books so my parents bought me a very important book they bought me bibles and other stuff but they bought me a very important book and that book is called operation world this is a 21st century edition that you find in this picture i have the very oldest one it's yellow color uh, text you know that cover page is yellow color it's a very old one um so what is this operation world it's basically a prayer book it is been designed in such a way that you can pray for all 365 and even the, for the leap year 366 days the entire countries of the world are covered in it you will find the major prayer points some info about it and you know that makes you an informed intercessor that's that would be our next um, point so informed people can identify this open door so that's a very important thing that we need to uh, develop so i told you like information makes you an intelligent intercessor uh, do you have have you read about william carey if not you should definitely read he uh, his uh, in his biography you can find that william carey had a shoe leather glove because he was a shoe he was a cobbler actually shoe repairer so he made a leather globe and he used to place his hands upon different countries and continents and especially india and he used to pray for india so there is a beautiful book about uh, the life of william carey written by saxon row craver the shoe leather globe you, there are lots of books written by william carey so you should uh, if you find this title you should definitely go through it so intercessors can go through it they can walk through this open door 
uh, if you are new to intercession, if you do not know how to intercede for nations, intercede for missions, I would recommend a few you know, titles, books, which would help you to understand what intercession is. Uh, it is written by Dr. Zakaria Stanley Foman from Cameroon, uh, south uh, uh, northwest of Africa. Uh, there are beautiful titles written by this wonderful man of God. He he was a great mentor to me in uh, uh, teaching me this art of intercession. He had visited India several times. So art of intercession, that's one of his book and the practice of intercession. Uh, there are other books also. You can check it out in the internet and you can learn how to intercede before the presence of God. When you intercede, what happens is God burdens you. God burdens you upon certain about regarding certain people groups, regarding language groups, regarding where He wants you to send, uh, wants you to go. You know that's that's a thing that we acquire when we intercede in the presence of God. You can simply start your intercession praying for your friends, for your neighbors, for your unsaved family members, church members. Yesterday I was telling you the greatest, uh, the sad thing that is happening in our in our generation is we have a lot of members who are not disciples. So we conduct a lot of discipleship programs to convert our own members into proper disciples of Christ, which is basically a faulty foundation because Christ told we have to make disciples and then bring them into the church of the Lord. Means you then baptize them and then it goes on. Uh, because we are in a wrong uh, step, our steps are wrong, we are finding a lot of things uh, not going according to the plan. So intercession really helps us to understand what is in the heart of God. Uh, I want to share my personal testimony, like how God burdened me to come to Maharashtra. When I was a young person, at the age of 13, I received, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And from that point of, point of time, I had this great passion to share that Jesus Christ is the greatest hope, is, is the only one who can give you true peace, and his love is unchanging. So uh, I was a great admirer of uh, Dr. Billy Graham. Um, but Dr. Billy Graham preaches in English. I was living in Tamil Nadu in Chennai. So <clears throat> my uh, India's Billy Graham was, according to me at that age, was uh, Dr. DJ's the Negret. So I used to lis listen to his messages in the radio. So that was a time of radio. So And then where the other radio programs used to come. So I used to write down all the scriptures that he speaks. And then I used to you know, write down those scriptures, memorize them. And every morning I'll go around my place in my neighborhood with a loud voice I would you know recite those scriptures and in between my words little bit of my words and slowly I started to develop this dawn preaching in those times it's called street preaching or dawn preaching those things are not to be found uh, nowadays okay but the greatest thing that I can tell you is like every evening from seven to nine we, we used to gather a few friends of us we used to gather and we used to, we used to pray for our own nation for India and for every state we used to pray one once we thought like why can't we bring an India map and then we will place our hands on the every state and we will pray and for every day we had a particular uh, state and then we started praying some of some of us or who were students used to bring some information about those states and then we used to pray for those states when it came for, for to pray for Maharashtra when I was when we were praying as young boys, uh, in that, uh, in, a, in, a, in a high school ground, it was in that particular night. God burdened me to pray for this state, and I was weeping so terribly. My heart was, you know, uh, bleeding. I was, I was unable to control my tears. I was crying out so loudly, weeping, asking God, Lord, you know, uh, you have to send more people to this Maharashtra so that many people would know you. Um, most of us were able to understand something about Bombay because Bombay was a very, it was and is a very famous city uh, in India and in the whole world. So Bombay was a very popular uh, uh, city. So we used to have some relatives in Bombay. So we used to hear a lot of things about Bombay, a lot of bad things about Bombay. So I used to pray for this particular state. You know what happened? After a few years, God gave me the opportunity to come and visit this state. And that was because my church, in the church where I was worshipping, where we were a part, part of, the church told me to go 
into North India or Central India to do some survey and find out where we can send people to do the work of the Lord. So I came to the central part of uh, India that is very specifically to Nagpur and Chandrapur and Varada, uh, Gachuruli, all these places. And then I, around six districts, I, uh, you know, I surveyed. And then uh, when I was leaving, that was the last day. I was leaving back to Chennai. The last stop was Chandrapur. In Chandrapur, if you ever have to uh, ever have to pass through this place, you can come and witness that place. There is a very old church, a uh, hundred plus years church built by the missionaries long ago, a uh, British era church. So that was actually ruined. It was a ruined structure. We were returning back uh, back to Nagpur from where I have to catch my train. So I simply told my interpreter, the translator, a, a local missionary, Marathi person, said like, brother, I see a church there. Can is it, it, It's not in use. It's it's all lying in ruins. Can we simply go there and see it? I love this British buildings, old architecture. So we both of us, we went there. It was fully filled, filled with a lot of long grass and all sorts of dirty things there were fully filthy. The building was deteriorating. Uh, I had a, an idea. I said, like, brother, we pray for this church. Both of us, we placed our hands upon the, the stone walls and we prayed. I prayed. I prayed, Lord, for whichever purpose you sent your servants from so far to you know, share the gospel to our people, to our Marathi people. Lord, all those pains that they took for it, why can't you revive this? I prayed after that. When I came and sat in the car, I was unable to control myself. I was weeping for the entire four hours. I was praying and praying and praying for the church and for that for this little town of Chandrapur. Chandrapur was a very small village that time, small town maybe. And God gave me a promise. And that burden increased day by day. And within a year, I decided to come to Maharashtra and very specifically to Chandrapur to serve the Lord. So when you intercede, God will give you, he will show you the open door. Without prayer, you cannot do that. It's not a simple prayer. It's, you know, opening your heart and pouring your heart before the presence of God. He will give you the right door before you. Okay. Then incarnational people can walk through those. What is incarnational people? These two pictures, probably you are well aware about uh, Agnes, Agnes Bogzu who turned to be Mother Teresa, Albanian nurse, uh, nurse uh, sorry, nun. And, but the other person, maybe you're not familiar with that person, she is Mercy Matthew from Kerala. Now she, nobody knows her by Mercy Matthew. She is called Dayabai. She works among the Gondi uh, tribal people in Madhya Pradesh for so many years. She changed herself. She changed her uh, name. She changed her identity. She lives among them. She looks like a tribal woman. I have met her personally. That was a great privilege for me. We, both of us, we preached in the same youth conference. That was so wonderful. Several years in a Marthama youth conference. So what I tell you is, see, this incarnational principle is such a wonderful tool. If you are ready to incarnate, if you are ready to change yourself, you know, get into their shoes. You know, it's, it's like the word becoming flesh. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is word in flesh. He was the living word, the Son of God, living in the heavenly heavens with all glory, but he emptied himself, came in the form of man, and that is why we have this wonderful joy and this peace. So, incarnational people can walk through the door. Uh, my greatest inspirations of all missionaries is one is David Livingston, second one is Hudson Taylor. I've read his story so many times. You know, this wonderful man, when he went into China, all his superiors, seniors, they were telling him, like, don't go inside of China. Inland is very dangerous. You just stay in the coastal area where you have your own people, you have your own English people, you have a culture, you have your food, everything is there, provided safe, safety is there. But he had this great passion to go to inland, to the inside of China, into the, into the inland of China. So he uh, broke all the rules and he went inside and he formed his own mission, uh, China Inland Mission, and then it is OMF International now. This is a beautiful book that talks about um, Hudson Taylor and his methods. He was a great person who applied this principle of incarnation, the pigtail and the chopsticks man. He changed his entire attire, the way he looked. He looked like a, he didn't look like an Englishman. He looked like a Chinese man. His, his costumes, his dress, his food, even 
he learned the language and he was able to preach to them in their own language so incarnation people can actually identify this door and they will profit out of it influencers can walk through this door who are influencers people who have a great standing in society if you are a teacher if you are it professional you are a medical person health worker you know different kinds of people you are a social worker you you can influence the society it's something like people come to you you are in a in a such a kind of position like people approach you that is a place where you can you know that's a platform which you can use to introduce them to the love of god to christ infiltrators i use this word very carefully infiltrators can walk through the door what is the meaning of infiltrators infiltrating infiltrating basically means like you are not aware that that person has come inside of you and has become one of you when you talk about infiltration i have to really tell what actually our dear brothers and sisters in rss and their affiliate organizations do if you are really interested to understand what rss is and what they do what is their basic agenda there is a very open you know website rss has its official website you can go to this i have given this link so you can just check into it they have their mission statement vision statement their entire setup at least whatever they can actually expose or share to the public it is given there and there are two books that i would recommend to you that you should definitely read if you want if you are really interested in understanding what rss thinks about our nation what rss thinks about uh, the christian church and conversion and things like this these are very beautiful reading please read it it is pro rss books these are written by authors who are pro rss but there is another book written by another wonderful historian of our times that is uh, uh, mr ram punyani he has written as an anti uh, view anti opinion there are hundreds and hundreds of books written by uh, people who are in favor of rss or who are in against of rss so you need to actually buy these books or you know refer these books in the library and you can do it i am doing this is my doctoral thesis i am doing uh, my doctoral thesis is in about rss and the indian church so uh, i have been blessed to it because like there are a lot of myths surrounding these ideas we simply listen to people whatever they say and then we um, you know we just propagate it but we need to understand one of the most important thing that rss does is it infill to in in the in india as well as in other countries it has his own members at one uh, in, in one great uh, meeting uh, in a conclave uh, the present rss chief uh, mohan bhagwat said we have people everywhere we are everywhere because bharat is bharat varsh is our country so we are everywhere top to bottom we are everywhere and they claim they have a very systematic plan of what you call as grassroots leadership you know they have a plan to have a shaka a branch of rss in every village every town uh, before 2030 and now it uh, the members are in uh, in crores and uh, there are other people who are uh, who are not members but uh, they can they are uh, supporters well wishers of the rss so rss is uh, very powerful organization it claims that it is a voluntary organization and it's a service organization without any religious affiliation but when you read through their own texts you will understand what is their agenda so what one thing really you know attracted me in rss was their policy or methods of infiltration how people actually get inside even churches there are a lot of churches mission organizations which contains rss infiltrators they are there so that is why these information which are very crucial for the mission for the church for para church organizations easily gets into the hands and so they can have their strategy of how they can create create some havoc or create a negative um, you know understanding or climate regarding what the church is doing okay so that is infiltration so uh, what am i suggesting here I- telling you the infiltrate some some other organization anti christian organization anti social organization i'm simply telling like we have to be people who can get inside the society because we are like the salt when salt is a part of a food it makes its uh, presence its presence is easily uh, you know tasted it's observed 
Now, the same way we as God's children, we, we need to be hidden and we need to infiltrate into the society for, for the Lord's glory, for to accomplish the work of the Lord. Okay, innovators can walk through this door. Innovators, you know, a lot of countries are close to gospel. Uh, churches have been banned. No mission organizations can go. But people who have great innovation, you know, in the form of education, the form of, you know, uh, community building, you can go with innovation. You can be an industrial innovator. IT is a great thing. We are working on a wonderful thing, a project which uh, I have uh, named it as Arise India, which was a great vision of uh, Swami Vivekananda. Don't think I'm a, uh, I'm a, no, I am not a, a, a pro RSS person. I study all these things because these are very important to me. I love my people. I love my country. So Arise India basically has two important things as its agenda. It is to you know to teach, educate people. Uh, in the grassroots level, in the villages, to um, uh, in two things. One is English. Second one is computer computer literacy. So when when a person is able to read, write, understand English as well as he has a good proficient knowledge in computers, then lots of things can happen to that person, his family, and to the village and to the community. So I will also ask you to pray for that. So if you have innovative ideas. It can be art, music, drama, whatever it is. You can walk through this door. You will find this door very easily. Stephen Davis is a great inspiration. Uh, he was dying in cancer. You all know his story, probably. But when God touched him and healed him, gave him a new life, he went and explored those ventures which uh, probably no other Christian has ever ventured. And, you know, um, I had the privilege of meeting him in one particular place in Mumbai, in Mumbai, and... Uh, uh, it was so wonderful that people, you know, when you're kind of a celebrity, people just gather close to you. You can, uh, they listen to you. So innovators, if you're an innovator, you, you will find that open door. Okay. Inspired people can walk through the door. Inspired, William Carey was an inspired person. He simply did not come and preach the gospel, planted some churches, you know, appointed deacons and pastors, started a seminary and went away. No, he did so many things. He started the press, journalism, all journalists, including our uh, beloved Arnab Gosami or any other person, you know, they all need to thank William Carey. The free press, the first newspaper was printed by William Carey. Okay, you can read about him. And all of us are very familiar with the, uh, in South Indian, Tamil Nadu, Velour, you have uh, the uh, Christian Medical uh, College and Hospital, CMC, Velour. The, the visionary of that hospital, which has been a blessing to thousands and thousands of people, is Idea, uh, Ida Sophia Skada, Ida Skada, inspired by a particular event which transformed her thinking. Probably you, whether you have read it or not, I would like to share with you. Ida was visiting her parents. Their, her parents and grandparents were serving in southern India. Uh, India is a very hot place. She had come from America and she was... Uh, really horrified to see the plight of these people and she, really she didn't want to be here for very long. She wanted to get back to her own place. Uh, as she was getting ready, something happened. In that particular night, a man came from a, the so-called high caste uh, community person. He came and he, he asked Ida to come and help his wife who was suffering in her labor pains. She said, like, I am not a doctor. My father is a doctor. Play better take my father so that he will help you. He said, like, other men cannot see or touch our women. You are a woman. You are, you are a lady. So you can come and help my wife. If you are not coming, I am going away. So she said, like, no, I can't help you. I don't know anything. The man went away. After a few hours, another man came from another caste, but relatively lower to the first person. And she, he repeated the same thing. She said she tried to convince him. Please take my father's help. But the man said, no, men cannot see our women. He went away. And finally, a third person came. He who belonged to a very lower caste, the so-called lower caste. And the same thing happened. She was really frustrated. She wanted to run away from India. She said, what kind of foolish people they are. We are offering help, but they don't want to take because they have some kind of social you know, restrictions. Next morning, what happened was, there was a funeral procession going on. So she just called up the pune and asked, what's going on? Who, who had died? And the man came, inquired and came back to Ida and said, like, that was the person's wife who came last night. So she was shocked. 
what has happened to this people see this life would have been saved and a few minutes later there was another procession going in another direction because in those days like according to the castes communities they had different graveyards cemeteries so she went uh, sent a man and the man came and reported saying like that's the second person's wife who also had passed away and the third direction she was finding another procession and she came to know that was the last person's wife who came for help for pregnancy that broke her heart she made a commitment telling like now i am going back to america i'll study i'll come back and i'll equip women in india what a great inspiration so inspired people can walk through have you heard about brother andrew if not you should read this book god smuggler this man took the copies of the precious word of god into iron curtain countries russia and countries like that so intrepid people fearless people can go through this can walk through this door and finally international people can walk through this door if you have that great passion to travel if you are working somewhere outside of the country so you have a great opportunity you can easily identify this open door which is right before you okay so these are some of the uh, the the open doors that i want to share with you first chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 says of issachar men who had understanding of the times to know what israel ought to do my friends we need to really understand that god has given his call we need to understand the times and then we need to understand how we need to equip ourselves and who can actually uh, you know make use of this open door and fulfill the mission of god finally what is the process let me just finish it with the process otherwise it would be un- incomplete and then i would move on to another thing tomorrow the process involves certain things there are two scriptures i am going to use for it the first one is from john chapter 4 verses 35 to 38 don't say don't you say there are still four months uh, then to come for the harvest listen to what i'm telling you open your eyes and look at the fields for they are ready for harvest the reaper is already receiving pay and gathering fruit for eternal life so the sower and the reaper can rejoice together for in this case the saying is so is true one sows and other another reaps i sent you to reap what you didn't labor for others have labored and you have benefited from the labor the other uh, uh, portion comes from uh, apostle paul's letter to the corinthians first corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 9 so what is apollos what is paul they are servants of the lord whom you believed and each one has a role the lord has given i planted apollos watered but the god gave the growth then so then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only god who gives the growth now the one who plants and the one who waters are equal and each will receive his own reward according to his own labor for we are god's co-workers and you are god's field beautiful metaphors the first one is from the mouth of jesus the second one is from paul jesus the master teacher explains this process this process of going and presenting the gospel to the people or making disciples for the kingdom this process involves certain things in john uh, chapter 4 see what did jesus says for in this case the saying is true one sows and another reaps i sent you to reap that uh, what you didn't labor for and others have labored and you have benefited from their labor please remember these things see there is one person who is laboring and the other person who is uh, reaping the rewards of that labor okay there are certain steps in this process the first one is cultivation second one is sowing planting third one is irrigation watering and finally it is harvesting cultivation sowing irrigation and harvesting and you find there is a team effort in these verses you can understand that it is a team effort the sower and the reaper can rejoice together in the corinthians he says like apollos and paul the one paul one is planting another one is watering but each will receive the reward of for his labor okay we are god's co-workers in in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 he says for we are god's co-workers it is of god that we are the fellow workers we labor with god we labor in god's power we labor under god we belong to god as his servants 
because Paul was very clear in his mission. He was not doing everything. That is the problem with our present day church. We wanted to be like a superstar or a one man army, you know, do everything. Uh, and we, we have all our programs whether for the children, for the youth, for elder people, for married couple, everything we can do. You know, this is the problem with uh, that is in the entire world. But the, the, the church of God is not like that, my dear friends. It is so different. There is a very interesting book uh, about the church and the parachurch. This picture will tell you. You know, there is always the fight between church and the parachurch. They have a lot of misgivings. But there is nothing as called as church and the parachurch. There is only one church. And that is the church of Jesus Christ. Because we are God's co-workers. He is working. Through his spirit, he is doing everything. The mission is his and he has chosen us. And that's a great privilege. We are God's fellow workers and we cannot do it with our own strength. We cannot. We can have plannings and strategies, committee meetings and uh, fundraising programs, everything. But uh, you cannot save a soul all through, through these kind of things. Okay. There was an interesting conversation uh, some years ago. There was a, um, a local committee meeting of a particular organization, mission organization. And I was a guest speaker there and they invited me to be a part of their local committee uh, just to give some, be an observer or give some suggestions. As I was listening and observing them, the very funny thing was, and a very sad thing was, the leader was telling, was asking his uh, co-workers or his, uh, um, his missionaries, his staff, he was telling them, uh, he was asking them, uh, like, see, for the last uh, one year, for 10 months, they were talking about 10 months, we have spent uh, a lakh a month, so 10 lakhs per, uh, for the last 10 months, okay? A lakh a month, so 10 lakhs for that particular field. And we, are being, we have been providing all the money to this field, but according to your report, you have only 50 people who have come to Christ and who have been baptized. So he said, like, what ratio is this? 10 lakh rupees spent for just 50 people what will i answer to my people who are superiors i was just shocked i did not know what to say to that person so later when we came back to our rooms i said like how can you compare a person's soul with money well you can inspire your people with so many words but you can never talk in business terms, you know, now we have like business uh, management gurus who are guiding our leaders. It's a very sad thing. You have to be very, very careful. This work is the Lord's work. We are we are dealing with the soul business. It is not the business of, you know, having certain numbers or success and targets and then showing it to the world and telling that we have done such and such a thing and having a legacy for us. Friends, we are wrong. That's not what the mission of Christ is. Okay. Cultivation. Hebrews 6, 6 chapter verse 7, it says, 6, 7 says, for, for ground that has drunk the rain that has often fallen on it and that produces vegetation useful to those it is cultivated for receives a blessing from God. Cultivate literally means to work on the soil, to till the ground, to prepare the ground for sowing. So tillage prepares the ground by loosening the soil. You know, we all know, like it, India is an agricultural uh, country. So we, we, are, uh, we know about how it's done. Deep plowing is needed when the ground is so hard and it is impermeable to water. Tilling re removes or kills the weeds. Tilling allows oxygen that helps the tiny biological life that helps plants grow. Fertilizer provides nutrients for the plants to grow. Soil preparation provides a bed of soil with moisture for planted seeds to germinate and grow. So this is a very important uh, uh, stage in ministry, in mission. So maybe you, 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 you are not in this particular uh, phase. Maybe I am not in that particular phase. Somebody else would have done this for us for many, many years ago. They would have prepared the soil. Or maybe God wants you to go to a place and prepare the soil. Okay, after the soil is prepared, then you have the sowing. The sower sows the seed. In James chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save you. So this, the, the word of God is a seed. It can save our life from eternal damnation. Sowing means helping people understand the truth with their minds. A lot of time, 
gospel is preached in the context of experience tomorrow i'm going to deal with that i'm going to show you like how we actually preach the gospel in so many different ways and where we falter you know where we uh, where we are expecting something and something uh, it, we don't get the proper results so uh, sowing is a process is is one of the stages in the process which is basically helping people to understand the truth with their mind we need to help people to understand not take an emotional decision the person is aware of the basics of the gospel the person understands what the gospel means for him okay then once the seed is uh, sown you have to water it that's what uh, apollos did apollos was watering what paul had planted paul had sown the seed and now apollos is watering it this is another stage third stage irrigated land represents about 15% of all land under cultivation but often produces over twice the yield of non irrigated fields so if you want a good yield then the land should be irrigated means the plant the seeds have to be properly watered relationships with christians helps the person develop a positive attitude toward the gospel in other words we have to show the person that uh, this is the gospel through our deeds okay then comes the harvesting which is the final thing addresses a person's will for the for a faith response i planted apollos watered but the harvest look at the harvest god gave the growth it is god who gives the growth john 4:45 let us come back to that passage don't don't you say there are still four months four more months then comes the harvest listen to what i am telling you open your eyes and look at the fields for they are ready for harvest that is 2000 years ago my friends 2000 years ago jesus said this statement open your eyes and look at the fields for they are ready for harvest okay i want to ask this question and leave this question with you where are you in the process with the people you are trying to disciple see you you know that's a call we are a disciple we are supposed to follow christ as his disciple take up the yoke learn from him and what did jesus command to us we have to disciple other people we have to make disciples we have understood our times we have understood the open door that god keeps before us that that he gives before us we have understood that who are those people who can actually make use of that opportunity to go through that open door to walk through it and now i have told you about the process through which this mission can be done nothing is mission impossible you know you can just change that statement as mission him possible in him it is possible because the mission is his it's not us he is simply giving us a call he is giving us an opportunity a privilege to partner with him to participate to participate with him with one particular experience i just want to close here several years before i had this great passion to to go inside you know remote villages where generally people outsiders like us uh, avoid to go because because of certain important restrictions in that area uh, these areas are in maharashtra and uh, chatisgarh border areas border villages and telangana and maharashtra border villages uh, if you are aware of these if if you are aware of this region you will understand like why these areas are difficult or unreachable is because of the movement of uh, naxalites and maoists they control uh, the forest areas dense forest areas and most of the villages uh, are in favor of them they are not in favor of the government they are in favor of the uh, the these groups you know these freedom movement groups many have their own ideologies but generally you can put them into leftist idea ideologies so these this area is actually is still called as red zone and chandrapur happens to be the logistics center of all these activities in chandrapur you won't find any attack or shooting or killing or kidnapping extortion nothing chandrapur is a very peaceful place is a very uh, powerful money loaded industrial place so this place has been speci- specifically chosen by these groups as a logistic center and i am privileged to say that god has given me so many uh, you know opportunities 
to meet these people and you know meet these people who are in favor of these movements and to show them the truth is yes there is a lot of risk there is a lot of you know threats so what happened was once i was returning back from my uh, bible study and uh, that was a very late night there was there were no buses so i knew like usually I, we used to get trucks because this is a industrial area 24/7 we have transport some transport we get so i was waiting for some trucks to come by so that i can reach my home still i had to travel for almost 2 hours i was i was standing in one uh, in one square uh, i saw this lady uh, you know carrying heavy bags and she was also coming few of us were standing there usually in that particular uh, time of the time of night you know it was around 2 am nobody will no women will come actually only men who are getting back to their homes or coming back from their companies will travel at that particular time and uh, that is a very usual time for me <clears throat> i was standing there and we were waiting for some truck no trucks came but there were there a jeep came so the jeep is very small and four of us had to get in so uh, when i went inside this lady also wanted to accompany us i was little hesitant because uh, i thought it's not good to travel with a woman companion you know i i thought like uh, it, it won't be good so i tried to avoid her but she said no no i have to go i don't have any other vehicle so you move that side so three men on the one side and then uh, this lady came and sat next to me when she sat next to me uh, something hurt my you know hips that was some kind of metal i thought like what is this she is carrying something in her you know around her waist so i was a little afraid and then uh, after some time uh, we came to a particular point the driver wanted to have some you know karra they eat this pan kind of thing so he went there was a shop open there he went to uh, take some pan and this lady also got down i had a i just had some time to peek in what was in her bag it was all weapons arms she was carrying actually transporting weapon so i my heart beat you know raced and uh, i was re- i was having different thoughts like when i get down there is a police station right next to the uh, chowk so i thought i'll go to this police station and tell the people like this particular person is traveling in this jeep so that you can catch that person in the next chowk in the next police station but i thought like no she has seen my face very well and i keep traveling to all these places so she might you know uh, be angry with me i simply you know did not uh, say anything to her but you know that night i was continually praying for myself for my family and for the people who are involved with me in ministry uh, the time came the place came we got down and we went on our own ways so these things keeps happening every time but you know there is god who is so wonderful who who gives us so many opportunities even to present the gospel to them so i can't say many things in this social like this an open media but uh, these these are lot of examples that i i would like to share with you uh, where god if he has sent you to a particular place he will provide the protection and the opportunity to share the wonderful word of god well i did not have the opportunity to share with her because that was not very appropriate she was in in her own mission so i didn't want to interfere in her mission okay but i had several other opportunities where god gave me this wonderful privilege to share the word of god there are a lot of people who have surrendered and come back they changed their lives now they are serving the lord in different organizations in in several capacities as missionaries evangelists pastors there well there is a lot of threat to these people where there is a lot of threat to even me and my family but you know god is there because he has kept us in this place for a wonderful work so uh, may god be glorified so i want to just leave this question with you where are you in the process with the people you are trying to disciple are you a person who is uh, whom god is using to prepare the soil or are you a sower are you a person who is irrigating or developing them helping them in the growth or are you the harvester wherever you god will really guide you and he will help you in this process may god be glorified let's close our eyes and pray father in the name of jesus christ we once again want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful opportunity that you gave us lord lord we are not worthy for your ministry it's so wonderful so massive and nothing can stand bigger before you lord nothing can stand against this because this is your work your mission you have given us this uh, awesome privilege to be your co-workers your fellow workers 
and to Lord to do the work that you have called for us. Lord, I pray for all our dear brothers and sisters who have, who have been listening to this, who are in this journey with us. Pray, Father, that you would inspire them, that you would teach them, you'd guide them, you'd show them, you'd put the burden in their hearts, Lord, and you would lead them uh, to the places where they can be a powerful witness for you. That's what you want from us. We give you all the glory. I pray for all the organizers, your servant, Brother, Mos Brother Manoj and his family and for the leadership team who are trying their best, Lord, to, uh, to help these young people, Lord, to know you, to understand your call and to obey you. Give you all the glory. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen.